Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Before we get started on football, I'd like to congratulate Coach Mitty on win number 600 uh, last night. Uh, what a great, uh, a remarkable career that Jeff has had, and he's been a great supporter of, of mine and our football program. So excited for Jeff to be able to get 600, and then congratulate Coach Tang on uh, the first of many wins here. Um, excited for Coach Tang, his staff, his players to get started last night, and uh, uh, he's been a great supporter of ours as well, and so um, good start by men's and women's basketball, and um, best of luck to them as they continue on with their seasons, as they, early on in their seasons. Um, with regard to us, uh, looking back at the film, it was kind of a tale of uh, two halves. Uh, in the first half, we uh, couldn't get off the field on defense. Uh, give Texas credit with some schemes that they did, and then uh, we didn't tackle very well uh, at all, and then when we loaded the box up a little bit more to try. They got some passes on us and um, just didn't play very well on defense that first half. Offensively, we moved the ball really well, but didn't answer. We answered the first score, drove down the field, tried to answer the second score, but had to kick a field goal, and then moved down to field to answer the third score. And that's when we had the fourth down and didn't get it. And by that time, then it's 21 to 10. And um, you know it was 31 to 10 at halftime after uh, we gave them a score late, uh, probably could have been worse, but uh, Echo Boido made a big-time play uh, to kind of save a touchdown. And and then in the second half, um, it got a little bit better once Josh Hayes made a big play and got the strip and gave the crowd, gave our team, gave everybody a little bit of, of life and a little bit of jolt, and offense took it in and scored. And then we started to settle in a little bit more and play a, a really good game. But uh, that time we were probably down a little bit too much. But uh, uh, all, all in all, I was pleased with the effort, pleased uh, with the comeback and uh, how the guys stayed in the fight. And with whatever two and a half to go, it's 34-27 with a chance uh, to tie or, or, or go ahead if we would have gone for two if we'd have scored. But it uh, didn't happen. And uh, we got to learn from it. We've got to own it. Um, coaches, uh, we talked about it. We need to be better as well. and. Uh, it's going to be another tough uh, battle this week going to Baylor, uh, a great place to play, a really good team. Uh, they're playing really well, and uh, we have to have great plans come up with because uh, it's going to be a big challenge for us. What exactly is Baylor doing now <clears throat> that they've become they've become a better football team the last couple of weeks? Yeah. Uh, one, they're probably they, – they turned it over a little bit against the West Virginia game uh, I saw. Uh, they turned it over and gave up more explosive plays than Baylor typically does. They're so difficult to defend offensively because they have misdirection. They run an outside zone play. They run play action out of it. Uh, you think we go for it a few times on fourth down. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be a game of possessions because they're going to hang on to the football. And if it's third and seven, they're going to try to get it to fourth and short to go for it again uh, to try to keep the football away from people. And I thought they had a really good plan against Oklahoma and executed it really well on offense. Uh, on defense, it's a little bit different um, structure than what they've done the last couple of years, uh, but they have really talented players, uh, and and the guys are they're playing with a lot of confidence. Coming off a game like that, in which you didn't play well, mm -hmm. not, you know there was just enough deficiencies that you couldn't overcome it. Is it hard to get the guys reorganized? Or at 21 years old, they they just are like we're moving on. Yeah, I, I think that's the way it is. I mean, we have to talk about it. We have to. Um, Talk about the positives. Talk about some of the things that we didn't do as well. Uh, try to eliminate some of those negative plays that did happen to us because that's the the poor start we had on defense put us too big of a hole for sure. Uh, and I, I do think they're pretty resilient and they know that uh, it's the next one on the docket and it's a tough uh, tough matchup. But uh, uh, I, I'm pretty confident they'll respond crazy is it coaching in this league and I know every coach around the country no matter what level will say you can lose every game you got to prepare yeah. for every game but in this conference you're literally in peril every game it, it really is and uh, that's a credit to the coaches a credit to the the, the talent the parity the fact that matchups are so important in this league, just how you match up with somebody, whether it's uh, O-line, D-line to uh, skill guys, whatever it may be, um, it's a play here and there. 
uh, that uh, maybe changes the momentum. And that's the thing. We could not get the momentum in the first half at all. It just snowballed on us. And then the second half, we make a play and get the momentum back somewhat. Um, but um, that's the, that's a challenge in, in looking at, you know, you could look at the slate of games and you could make a, a case for either team every, every weekend. And um, um, that's, uh, that's part of the Big 12 in college football right now. Uh, two guys who were a little banged up at the end of last week were Malik and Cade, and I was just wondering how they're progressing. Right yeah, uh, I don't see uh, Malik uh, or Cade practicing today. Um, our hope is to get them back on Wednesday. That's the, what the trainers have said, whether it's in a limited role or whether it's more full speed. But um, we believe both are going to be available. I know Will's a... Uh, team player, I'm yep. sure he handled everything fine. But how, what was the you know back and forth there, saying you played your games, now you're going to go back to the he and I are still having that conversation. Um, so I don't want to speak to it yet until I get a chance to to truly uh, visit with him. I know Colin visited with both he and Adrian. Um, you know we still have a plan, and um, uh, Will understands the plan, uh, and uh, we'll keep him uh, abreast and uh, of the situation. And I just. I look at it. I look at it from Will's point of view, and I've not played a full season yet. And whether that is by default of Skyler getting hurt or uh, by Adrian uh, coming here and playing, and I know the competitive side of Will wants to play a full season. But he he handled last game. Well. Absolutely, those two guys are really good friends, and he handled that really well as a team player. You bet he would want to play, just like. The week before, I think Adrian wanted to play, and he couldn't, and Will said, let's go. Um, and that's that's the healthy part of that relationship as well as how, how I think Coach Klein handles those guys. Well, they've been particularly opportunistic defensively the last couple of weeks. Is that anything they're doing schematically, and do you just lock in on what you guys do to prevent that? A little bit of both. They uh, they play some really tight man coverage, um, and they had some balls that were overthrown. Uh, Oklahoma did that. They made some picks on, especially in the first half, that flipped the field on them. They got a couple of fourth down stops. They converted a couple of fourth downs, which gave them another possession in essence. Uh, and then they're they're going to run some timely pressures. Uh, and they do a really good job of offense complementing the defense as far as controlling the football offensively, hitting some explosive plays. Um, when they need to, and then uh, getting those stops um, at critical times. But uh, you know, they've the last few weeks they, they're finally clicking in, in my mind, uh, in all, on all cylinders, and going to OU and, and winning on the road's a big win for them. There's been a common theme in the TCU game and the Texas game of facing the run. How do you work on those fundamentals through the week when you're so limited and? How much you can live tackle? Yeah, and there's a lot of things. Whether it's live tackle or just the amount of shoulders and stuff that people have, um, you, you know, you you try to simulate a lot of fits. You try to simulate a lot of schemes. Um, we were able to simulate. We've simulated it every week. Uh, the same thing. Now the simulation didn't work against TCU, and it worked really well against Oklahoma State. And then it didn't work as well. You can't simulate B. John Robinson very well. Um, but it's something that uh, you know we have to do a, a really good job stopping the run, and this is going to be one of those weeks that's going to be really tough. We've got to get a lot of hats to the ball. Have you had a chance to analyze the uh, time management situations that you guys encountered on Saturday? Um, well, if there's there's really the only one that that is to talk about, and that's the last sequence of the game. And Colin and I were on the right page of we got a first down, the clock stopped. You don't want to waste a timeout when the clock stops. And we both said, let's go one more play. And if we stay in bounds, we'll use one. Um, and we didn't get that play because we ended up getting stripped on that play. Kick return gains kind of been stoned a little bit. Didn't get past the 15-yard line on a number of occasions. Do you think about fair catching it at all moving forward? Um, not with the guys we have back there. Uh, we don't. Um, we struggled. I thought Texas did a really good job uh, and and kind of uh, schemed up some of the returns that we had. We've we've looked at it thoroughly Sunday and Monday and believe we have some help, some answers um, to try to counteract that because you still want to find a way to get Malik and fill the ball when you can rather than just fair catch it. But we have to be better on that. You know, I would say speaking of special teams, I think Ty Zentner had his best game uh, at K-State. You know, he's kicking 
kicking the ball at such a high level uh, from kicking it out of the end zone into the wind to uh, I think his best punt was into the wind. Uh, and then he's throwing triple duty on there uh, with PATs and field goals and, and happy for Ty because in his last year of college ball, um, he's getting to do all three and doing them with great success. About the, the remarkable play by Echo Boydo, but Kobe Savage really blew up that third down to give your offense a yep. chance. Is that just, he just read that play from the jump? It was a blitz. And um, I'm sure they were probably supposed to hook him. And instead, they tried to kick him out, and the ball stayed outside. But he stayed on course and stayed on his his track and, and made, a, made a big play. Which I want to ask you about uh, Blake Shape. And you guys had a chance to see him. One of the, you were one of the only teams to see him last year when he came into the game. Um, does that give you any kind of advantage, having seen him in person now? Absolutely, because he was really good last year. I mean, really good. And we didn't know much about him. I'm sure Baylor knew a lot about him. And uh, uh, he threw the ball with precision. He threw it with confidence. He ran the ball really well. Um, I think he was the difference. I mean, he was a big spark. Not that Bohannon wouldn't have led him to a victory. Don't get me wrong. I just think that that kid rose to the occasion and um, you see it. I mean, you see it every game he plays and I, I'm not sure when it happened. I know he missed some of the West Virginia game and um, they probably sputtered a little bit when he wasn't out there. Uh, but uh, he's a terrific talent and uh, a guy that can beat you with his arm or his legs. I want to ask you about <clears throat> the targeting penalty. Um, two games now with yeah. Khalid and then Julius, that you've had that happen. Is there any way to talk about how to properly lay a oh, big hit or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, we talk about it all the time um, and emphasize those things to take it out of the game. We, we really, we're, we're advocates of, of everything, of keeping your eyes up and seeing what you're hitting. I think that was a really hard one for Julius to get away from. Uh, I, I don't fault Julius. It was such a bang-bang play. Um, that the ball was there and he was right there. Uh, it, uh, I, I'm, I'm not saying it was a bad call because I get why we call these things and, and I'm comfortable with them calling it. I, I'm okay. I'm not saying that. I just thought it was really going to be difficult for him to avoid it. And we keep talking about different ones of targeting one, targeting two. I don't know if we'll ever get to that because it's still about player safety. And, and I understand why we won't get to that if we don't of targeting one, targeting two. Uh, it's, it's unfortunate the penalty is so severe when it's not a blatant, malicious, I'm going to lower my head and just spear you deal. Um, but that's a conversation for probably another day with a bunch of people in a room that they're going to have. And, um, you know, I, I, I felt bad for Julius because I, I know there was no uh, intent on his part. You always talk about next man up. Jacob Parrish came yeah. in. How would you assess his play on Saturday? Um, Jacob played really well for a true freshman coming in there. And um, uh, he's played a lot of games now. And he's done some really good things. And it's going to help him in, in the future. Um, because he's going to be a, a terrific player here, and he's he's going to play a little bit more even each week. Uh, it just hurt losing. Julius is a, a legit 6'3", 210-pound corner that is one of our best tacklers and one of our best cover guys, and um, it was it was a factor for sure. Coach, you've conveyed earlier in the season that you meet with the quarterbacks on a fairly routine basis. Can you describe what your conversations like were with Adrian after the game on Saturday? Yeah, we well, we – I didn't talk to many guys after the game with all the stuff that I have to do, but I get them on uh, Sunday or Monday and Tuesday. And like we met yesterday and we watched a lot of the tape of, uh, uh, of Baylor. I don't review the game with them. Colin does that, but uh, we meet on Monday and then we'll meet uh, when I leave here uh, and talk about things that I see from uh, the next opponent. Uh, we talk a little bit uh, about things that he saw on Saturday Um things that he liked, things that he wishes he maybe would have changed, whatever it may be. But, you know, I'm not going to be a, a hindsight's 2020 guy. It's tough. And uh, the, their two D tackles were really good, and they were they were back in his hip pocket most of the game. He probably avoided four or five sacks uh, because of his athleticism. 
Um, but those guys are really good. And, and Adrian knows he's got to have a uh, do a great job of hanging on to the football and having good ball security during those times when the pocket collapses. That's that's um, uh, something that uh, he knows. But uh, we we kind of move on pretty quickly and start talking about the next opponent, uh, especially because it's Monday and Tuesday, and we got to start moving on. Can you explain how much he's maybe improved from game one against South Dakota to what you saw on Saturday against I Texas? Think, yeah, the confidence in throwing the football. Um, I thought he made some really, really good throws, uh, especially off schedule or uh, with people right in his lap uh, to hang in there, took some shots. Um, what was great was uh, on Sunday in his conversations with Coach Klein, he felt really good. He was sore because he hadn't played in a month, uh, but um, he felt really good. And so we don't see any anything that would slow him down from continuing to feel better and better. Can you, you you talked about excuse me you talked about Baylor's run game a little bit and how how important that's going to be to stop. Can you go into you a little bit more, especially Reese in particular, and what makes him so hard um, to stop? He's got great vision. Uh, he's got t- tremendous balance. Um, he understands for a young player the scheme that they're trying to run with with some of the wide or outside zone and um, sticks his foot in the ground and gets vertical pretty pretty well and runs through arm tackles, but he's also got the speed to beat you on the edge. And then Baylor leads the league in, in interceptions. Obviously, K-State's been pretty good about avoiding those, but have you seen anything that they do that kind of sets them up in that position? Well, a couple things. They, you know, they play some man coverage uh, with some two high safeties that uh, – um, allow those guys to read some eyes, and uh, when you get, uh, they, they're pretty long up front, so some there's some batted balls that uh, they get a lot of tips, what we call tips and overthrows. If there's if the balls are tipped, they find a way to make the play. If the if there's some overthrows, they they got people in position to make plays, and um, you know they're 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 very opportunistic on, on defense, and they and they don't give you anything real easy, and that's the thing that uh, we've got to do a great job of with the different concepts that they do, whether in, uh, it's off their pressures or off their base stuff of, um, you know, we're going to have to do a great job of keeping the football and managing that and not getting into second and third long and staying on schedule. I read the Baylor's box scores actually kind of remind me of what you guys used to do at North Dakota State, mm-hmm. four or five guys having rushing touchdowns yeah. in games. What makes that so hard to defend? Uh, keeping fresh bodies more than anything. Uh, you know, I think they have a multitude of, of running backs that can make plays. They've got a bunch of wide receivers that can make plays. Tight ends are a factor. Um, I think comes back to the QB. He knows how to distribute the ball. He He's so comfortable for a young player in what he sees. Um, all of them understand that the run's going to set up everything. And if you can't stop the run, it's going to be a long day for you. And if you put more guys in there to stop the run than the play action, some of the bootleg stuff is going to be um, an issue for you. And so uh, we just we have to have great high discipline this week. It's so important that our guys understand their keys and reads and stay with them and don't, don't try to do somebody else's job. You've uh, relied primarily on your three receivers most of the year. Now with two guys that are banged up a little, who are some guys? I know RJ yep. got in, but uh, who else? Are yeah, you RJ um, will play a little bit more. Uh, we still have some games with Jaden Jackson. Uh, he's a he's a guy that uh, we're hoping to save his year because of what you guys see with the guys that are that are playing. Um, uh, we'll give Jaden. He'll he'll be on the trip. Hopefully, get um, a bunch of practice reps. And if we can use him, need to use him, want to use him, we have that availability um, based on Cade and, and Malik. But uh, um, those guys in particular, Seth Porter is another one that um, is old reliable, playing on all the special teams, but uh, obviously gives us some things in the past game as well as some of the jet sweep things. This strikes me as a very resilient and unified team. Where does that come from? Uh, the captains and the senior leadership and the leadership council. Uh, those guys, to what you guys asked before about any given Saturday, this is a hard league, and they understand that too. They know that, um, you know, we battled our tail off and won a tight ball game against Texas Tech, battled our tail off, won a tight ball game against Iowa State, against Oklahoma. Um, you know, we we made the plays at critical times. And in the flip side, um, battled our tail off, didn't make the plays against TCU at, at the critical